video, y'all. It's your boy, Sherry Speaks. I'm not talking about black life. This is the two episodes for just and unjust. This episode was fucking amazing. Here's why. Is in Jennifer take a stand for Khalil against the racist ass principal saying, Look, Khalil's just like any other, just like any, any other one of us. We're just one break away from doing something that we didn't want to do. You know, and you know, Francis considered him to be a fucking gang member, but he really wasn't. Khalil really wasn't that. I mean, really wasn't a gang member. He was really just took the opportunity to walk again, you know, which wasn't the, which wasn't the best, um, just opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. You know, Jennifer said, like, if you have the chance to walk again, if you're a cripple, if you have the chance to walk again, when you take it, you know, and all the other students clamored and said, hell yeah, we take it. You know, because there was like a, a, a memorial for Khalil, you know, and I had to really respect that because it was really cool to see that. But then also throughout the episode, you know, we, at the very beginning of the episode, we saw um, Lane almost being taken by um, the Markovian uh, intelligence group, you know, and then we also heard of uh, Odell, you know, once again, you know, who happens to be, oh, that's an old friend of Lane and Jefferson from the sounds of it. And what's really strange about that is the fact that, you know, he met her up at the facility and he said, so wait, let me get this straight. So you want to kidnap me? Well, not, not necessarily kidnap her, but you want to take the pie children, even though they're almost about a few months away from being completely stabilized, you know, because that's pretty much what Odell wants. He wants to stabilize the pie people, the pie children, so then that way he can get into the Markovian intelligence agency, so then that way they can leave him the hell alone. Sounds like some pretty real deal people. Even Gamby said, look, these guys are from a European faction. They can really do they're pretty damn brutal. They just they almost killed uh Anissa in the process, you know, by hitting in the damn bank. But you know, I guess you know, Anissa must have froze up froze up while trying to protect her, her mother. You know, that's how the bullet got her. Otherwise, you know, when she took a deep breath that wouldn't have affected her. But you know, but what do I know? But also we see the as well with the pods, you know, and we also see uh, Dr. Jace with Odell, I told him, look, if you can, if you can shift, if you can transport these pods to this person and keep them stabilized, we can grant you complete safety, you know, from the Markovian intelligence agency, so, we'll see what happens, man, and also, you know, unfortunately, we had to see Jennifer go through the wakes, the process of the, the stage of the grief with her, you know, mainly in this episode, we saw both both uh, anger, you know, and vengeance kind of colliding, and then also we see a bit of an argument between Lynn and Jess, I mean, Jefferson, because, you know, Lynn kind of feels like, you know, she wants to, you know, get her to go back to school, so now it's going to be normal, you know, Jefferson's like, wait, what do you mean normal? You know, she's like, I'm not going to marry you out there. He's like, wait, what? And then that's when Jennifer walks in and says, look, Dad, I'm ready. Give me a suit of I can I'm just going to put the bias wells in the ground. You know, and she, after the episode ended, to which Odell actually was at Khalil's funeral, watched him being buried, and Jennifer promising that to Khalil that day he would actually be in the ground just like he is. You know, it really sounds like Jennifer himself in the trail for next week's episode that she's really about that life. She's really ready to take it to Tobias Wells, but she wants to avenge the woman, the man that she loved. You know, I mean, and who can blame her? I mean, she knew who, who, who he really was. You know, you know, and even we can have a hard time with Jefferson, the principal, saying, look, I'm so white guy. I slept on the streets, I ate dog food. My mother was a heroin addict, and my father watched her OD. You know, no one gives a damn about the white guy, because as far as I can tell, in this country, you know, the white man can be from wherever he walks alive he can. You know, everyone wants to send the white man to hell, for all they care. You know, from all, you know, no matter the, the background they've actually gone to, or the social injustice that they've gone through. You know, and um, he has a point, you know, but he still stick with the, the brothers and sisters, you know, commemorating their brother Khalil, and for being, you know, <laughs> who, who they really saw him as, which is a black man who just made, take an opportunity, take the opportunity to walk with him. You know, he wasn't the best opportunity, and was not the most just, as I mentioned before, but an opportunity nonetheless. I can't hate him for that. Another thing we want, you know, I think I noticed is how. That's a pretty much, you know, stood up for a black woman who was being domestically abused by her boyfriend, uh, a capo of uh, the laundry gang. She took the money to pay for Khalil's funeral because at the very beginning of the episode, you know, Khalil's mother could not pay for her own son's funeral, which is pretty, really, really messed up. You know, you can see Jennifer going through it, you know, as Lane and Jefferson were talking about before. She really was going through it. 
You see, Garrison actually get the guy that actually was trying to go after Lynn. You know, and brought him in, but uh, he actually got off with a uh, diplomatic leniency, I guess, somehow. So, there's no telling if we'll see him again actually in tomorrow's. So I believe it's the season finale, or possibly the season finale next week, I think. I'm not sure, but he, nonetheless, I think next week's episode is going to be pretty damn lit. Um, Grace and I guess I pretty much hit another snag. I like the little comic book reference we got of Black Run, Lightning, and Thunder. That was pretty cool. Um, and also, I think this is starting to put two and two together that Grace has powers. Possibly she might be one of the escaped, um, possibly a part of the uh, ASA, maybe, or maybe that Mark Markovian intelligence agency, maybe. I think that's what Grace is a part of, because, you know, when Anissa brought up, you know, hey, like, what's this? I want you to be my family. You know, and Grace just shut down. She just said, look, every time I get around you, I can't control myself. You know, Anissa, you know, misplaced the guy that has, oh, okay, she just has butterflies. She really loves it. No. Her fucking powers are coming down. Because, I mean, Anissa knows that her damn pupils change. You know? So, I look forward to seeing what happens next week, man. I hope I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Um, this is the new Watch Watch Weeks, please be like.